Hey, 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 what's up, you guys? It's your girl, Stubbs, your hostess with the mostess. And thank you for joining me for another episode of The Stubbs Show. My special guest on today is author Kenya Nicholas, and I am getting ready to sit down and talk with her about her new book, Growing Up Can Be Fun. Actually, it's a series that she's coming out with. And I want you to know more about it and her new movement under Life Books for Kids. It's so much going on in this world that we need to talk about life issues with our children. So let's get ready to get this show kicked off. Thank you for joining me again. Welcome to another episode of The Stub Show. Welcome to another episode of The Stub Show. I hope you guys are feeling great on today and ready for our discussion of should we be discussing real life issues with kids? Um, In America, all over the world, everywhere, there's so much stuff going on from racism to the injustice towards the black race and um, other cultures. Um, We have religions, religious wars going on. I mean, there's so much going on in this world today. School is shut down. We have the pandemic with the coronavirus. Um, Domestic violence rates are going up. These kids are living in the home, um, also experiencing this domestic violence with their parents and family. And it's just like, should we be discussing this with the kids or should we not be discussing it with our children? Um, is it is it going to make them scared or what it's going to be? But well, let's get into it. My special guest for today is Miss Kenya Nicholas. She's an author of the book Growing Up Can Be Fun. Um, it's a series of books um, that she's doing. Miss Kenya Nicholas has been a champion for kids for over 30 years. Her passion to motivate our youth to be the greatest they can be and encouraging parents to nurture their kids' talents is paramount to her calling. Her mission is to help our kids help our world. Her love for family has given her a broad base from which to approach many childhood topics and her inspirational and age-appropriate book series. Life Books for Kids is a fun and spiritual book series created to help kids understand how to tap into the higher power to navigate through life. Basic life morals are discussed, I mean, basic life morals are discussed the age appropriate humor, captivating illustrations and real life stories. Welcome to the Stub Show. Thank you for having me. How are you me. feeling today? You look beautiful. Thank you. I just noticed that all oh, in those nails. Are you look beautiful. You, she's definitely bling bling. I love it. How Thank are you feeling you. today? I'm feeling really good. Thank you for asking and thank you for um, having me. The opportunity um, to help kids is right up my alley. So I thank you for having this interview. That I was, um, I'm looking back and reading where you said tap into the higher power to navigate through life. Absolutely. Where did that come from? Sometimes kids forget that God is there to help them. Um, kids don't talk like adults. They don't know how to communicate a lot. So they go through a lot. And so parents, you know, they say, do as I say. Mm-hmm. Just do what I say, not as I do. Mm-hmm. But we don't explain the why. Mm-hmm. And so the kids sometimes, you know, they're a little confused. You know, why she keep telling me this? Why she keep telling me that? But they go into their own understanding. Mm-hmm. And they forget that God has their back. And I want to... Uh, make sure that kids know that God is there. You know, reach out to Him. Um, talk to Him. So those are the kind of things when I say tap into your higher power because that's exactly what it is. You can't talk to your parents. You can't talk to your friends. Know that God is there. So someone's always there. You know, I was seeing, um, I think it was on the news where some schools uh, were incorporating uh, meditation. Yes. And pulling out the in-school suspension um, so they can pull, you know, have the kids do some motivating, you know, so they can focus more and, and learn how to control their behavior exactly. versus, you know, just 
being out of order. And like you said, we tell our children, do this, don't do that, you know, you better do. But we're doing different things and they're watching us the yes, whole time. They are. And then they, they end up mimicking what we do. Yeah. So um tell us a little bit more about you and your childhood growing up. Well, I grew up as a Southern Belle. I'm from Fort Pierce, Florida. Okay. And um the inspiration for writing the book was based on my family and my dynamics. My mother was a military uh, mom, and she went into the military to get a, you know, more opportunities to have a better life for me as well. And I thank you for that, mom. And the ultimate sacrifice for her, you know, was leaving me as a child with my grandmother. Okay. So it's a lot for a child to raise up, to be raised rather, you know, outside of their parents. You know, in my case, my mother was military. I have other family members that are not with their parents. Um, but the book is teaching them, you know, although you're, you may be not with your parents, you know, you may be raised outside of mom and dad, appreciate them, okay? Because I, at first, I was like, oh, my mom's not here, and you know, we see other kids with their parents. And then I would be my grandmother. I loved her dearly, but sometimes you want your mom. Yeah. So that was my inspiration, um, you know, growing up without my mom, you know, just coming in and out because she had to travel a lot. And she was, you know, there for me um, when she wasn't overseas or somewhere like that. So my upbringing was mostly with my cousins and my aunt. So everybody, family, friends. You know, I had people that used to come and see uh, me and my grandma's house. Oh, your mother's in the service. So that was admirable. Just growing family. up, uh, and that's what families do. You know, they substitute, they fill in for one another. They help each other. So I love my family. They did that for me. And now um, through the book series, some of our characters in both of the series, this is our 7 to 12 year old series, but I also have a younger series mm -hmm. where I wanted to make sure they felt included into the family because some of them may have been displaced, you know, living with other family members, back and forth with mom. So um, I can relate to them because that's what I went through. And you know, the uh, village is very important. We really don't have the village anymore in our yes. black communities. And we need to get back to that, the times where if you had to go out of town or like your mom had to yes. travel and be in the military, she had family there to support to fill in that gap. Nowadays, kids are just being left alone, left with anyone and anything is happening. And that's why I'm glad you're writing about it from experience. You know, the, the good side of things and tell children, come, it's okay with family, pull things back yes. together. And the parents should be reading these books with their kids. Absolutely. You said that. Two points. And this isn't rehearsed, but the next book is, book is called Love Your Village. Mm. So it's about church, community, family, home. Uh, and it's teaching the importance. Um, of course, making it funny because, you know, you want to make sure you captivate the children's attention and keep it to finish. But additionally, at the end of each chapter, there are thought-provoking questions uh -huh. where the kids will be um, introduced in a sneaky way into journaling because those questions um, has, the, has the kid to write about their experience with whatever that chapter is about. And that's when I want the parents to say, hey, let me see what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, like what did they read about bullying or what did they read about being honest? You know, and then they can drive it home you know, with the parent, with the with the child, with the child, right? And then I have journals where when you go through each day, all they have to do is circle happy face, mm -hmm. sad face, or straight face, and all the parent have to do is look and see well, what did she circle today, and if it was sad, she could say, hey, what happened today? Yeah. Open up dialogue, mm, get yeah. them talking again, because they get in those phones. Yes. Social media games. They ain't talking to parents. They sure ain't. They and, are not talking. And a lot of times they're in their room and with so much going on, you don't know what's going on on these phones through the internet. Which takes me to um, the next question: Is when we were growing up as kids, going to the library and getting a book to read was an ex a whole experience. Yes. Um, nowadays, technology is taking over everything, and kids aren't reading enough. In what ways do you feel like this will affect our children in the future? 
if we continue to allow technology to be the parent? Well, there are a lot of different ways. Um, and my daughter got to the point where she didn't want to read as much. So I was like, well, read my book and let me know what you think. And she was like, oh, so she would read it. Uh, but before that, I mean, she would read the whole series of different books mm -hmm. and and wait for the next one. Couldn't wait, you know, going Excited. to the library, getting books or, you know, she used to like that. But now that with the technology, she'd rather be in her phone or she'd rather be on social media. So what I think, and that what's worked for me, just let her do an audio book. Mm. Or yeah, that's if I'm thing. trying to drive home a point for her, I would say, um, you know, maybe a lesson that I want her to learn, but then I'll say, there's some videos on YouTube and like, it's different voices. You know, you can hear a child that's talking about them being bullied. Or you hear a child talking about how they save money because we teach entrepreneurship for the young ones. Very important. Um, so different things that you might say to your kids, you know, they may not hear or listen to what you have to say, but if they hear from someone uh, else, a father figure or a mother figure or a grandmother figure or a child figure in in a YouTube video, mm -hmm. they'll say, "Oh, that's what my mom said. Mm -hmm. Let me listen." Mm -hmm. You know. A fail to play for situations you don't understand. I can't save you now. Going all the day, you've mistaken me for something you could play. I'm not your piano, no. guys welcome back to the stub show with my special guest author Kenya Nicholas we're talking about her book growing up can be fun it used to be fun there's so much going on in the world today it's like it's fun but a little bit dangerous and you risky. Do a different way of fun <laughs> yeah 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 you got to definitely um, do a different way of fun but we were uh, discussing real life issues and the fact of should we be discussing real life issues with our children and um, my next question to you is you know we have racism going on we have the uh, all this stuff going on with politics. Mm -hmm. um, we have the um, religious wars going on. Um, things, kids being kidnapped, the injustice system. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of black men um, are being killed. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think we should go about and should we be discussing these issues with our kids? And at what age should we start? Um, I would say start as early as possible um, because they are going through this too. Um, if you don't talk to them, then you're leaning or, or encouraging them to lean towards their own understanding. So if you have to go out of your way and maybe, because it's everywhere. I mean, they, they see it on the TV. It's on their social media. They're on the phones. It's coming across. So it's better for you to be proactive as a parent and talk to the kids about these things because they're facing them. If you're not talking to them, they're like confused. Mm -hmm. You know, it can make them, you know, depressed or sad. Oof. Then you have another issue. Um, and I think that, you know, being a kid, they don't understand what's going on. And if you're not talking to them, you know, you could be going through the same thing. So you can use some of your experiences to talk to them in the way that they can understand whether they're, you know, five or 15 or even 25. You know, I think that we as parents, you know, shouldn't 
shy, you know, shun them away from reality because it is reality. Eventually, they will face it, or they may have friends that are going through it. And sometimes, when they talk to each other as kids, they can't give each other advice. Yeah. You know, they can say what they say in their little kid way, but they need to hear it and and have an explanation from someone that is an adult or someone that really knows what's going on. And that on. they trust, you know. Exactly. I was Who thinking, better than your parent? I was thinking about um, specifically racism. And I was like, you know, that's such a touchy, like religion and politics, it's such a touchy subject. And it's like, if you don't talk to them about it, it's still happening on TV. Exactly. And if you're it's a everywhere. mom of boys, as young black boys, how do you begin that conversation? <laughs> Well, I am a mother of a black boy or a black man now, um, <clears throat> and a wife of a of a of a black man. Exactly. They gotta go out exactly into this stuff. A wife, uh, my father. I mean, I have black men all around me in my family. I'm an only child, but I have a lot of cousins, you know, play brothers, friends that have to go through this, and you know, unfortunately they're going to deal with this at one point. So we need to teach them, educate them on, you know, how to react, know your rights. Um, you know, oh, when people so cool. come to you, yeah, and you think they're kids, they shouldn't have to worry about this, which they shouldn't, but in reality, they go through this too. Mm -hmm. So I would not shun from that. Um, my son has dreads and, you know, people are 50-50 with yeah. the dreads. Some people are like, okay, that's his culture, but he's smart. Let's hire him. Mm -hmm. But then you have cut his you know, hair. Cut, dress, cut yeah. your hair. You know you have people that say you know cut your hair. You know you want, that's not accepted. So it's six, you know, in one hand, half a dozen in the other. You know, but certain things that we have to do um, to kind of level the playing field for opportunities for us. Um, but at the same time, you know. A lot of companies are embracing um, cultural sensitivity, and you're allowed to express, you know, yourself and your culture, you know. But that's not across the board. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those are conversations. Of course, when my son graduated from college, I'm like, cut your hair. He's like, I'm not cutting my hair. Right. He thinks his head is small, and he thinks the dreads, you know. But he loves him. it. Yeah, and then the cultural aspect of it, you know, he's like. I, I'm I'm in touch with my culture, mm -hmm. you know. I love my culture, and I don't want to have to sacrifice my culture, you know, for a job. So you have to have those conversations with them. And I have a college yeah. degree. Exactly. So why? He's like, that should speak. He has two. Well, see, he got two degrees. So he's like, Mom, I got you two degrees. What else you want? And I'm like, Son, let's talk. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it's like. You, you just don't know where to begin just yes. to begin telling them it's not more so you it's the skin that exactly. you're in and some of people because I can't say that everyone um, that's not black is a racist or they, oh, no, you know, they have no, hate no. because that's not the case but no. media tends to hype this stuff up so much mm -hmm. and that's why it's so important that we get our kids back into reading mm -hmm. because with them seeing things and not understanding it's like this or is that but the whole time reading will pull you back into other things exactly so how long um did it take you to um write your book oh my gosh um i've been writing books and movies for a mighty long time like since the 90s mm -hmm. um, but I didn't really finish anything because um, and I love you Ice Cube but I was writing barbershop first no oh, okay. <laughs> you took your idea huh yeah well I won't you need to send her some money okay I'm gonna say you took it but what happened I had been writing it for like two years because my son was born in 94 and I was going through a divorce at the time so I had to be the one to take him to the barbershop and that's like almost a safe haven for our men and here I am just warming in the barbershop and I'm listening to all the men conversations so I'm like this would be a good concept for a movie mm -hmm. and that was in 94 95 mm -hmm. so unfortunately procrastination is a thief mm -hmm. so I was taking a long time and then I'm not knowing that you know people steal ideas sometimes yes, so do. I'm just talking to everybody yes, and I'm not by no means saying uh, that you stole anything from me I keep it's just me 
being um, a procrastinator. Um, I think that a lot of my ideas could have gotten out quicker because that's not the only one. There's been a lot of them that have come out mm -hmm. of um, some of the ideas that have come out with. I've seen them go into the movies and be blockbusters. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, how many times am I going to see this? So after, um, I would say about five or ten of those, I said, okay, let me just get something done. I got too much material. So, um, but for this particular series, I would say I've been writing it for about four years. Okay. Um, and I just haven't been able to get it to that perfect spot where I wanted to. So I had to engage other professionals to help me get through. Because I figured if I get one done, that would motivate me to keep going. You had a formula to do the next. And you got to because it's a series. Exactly. We're going to take a quick pause. We'll be right back. You know, as being a black woman and a mom and a business owner um, with so much going on and so much weight on the black woman's shoulder, and I know that you're not a single mom, but we have single moms out here, we have married women. Um, speaking to our other women that are listening, what keeps you going? How do you not quit? You know, why didn't you give up? Giving up is easy. Everybody gives up, but when you give up, what do you have? Fight for what you want. I was a single parent before as well. Um, I was a single parent and it was hard, but is it worth it? In the end, imagine yourself going across that finish line. That's what you need to keep in mind. Um, don't quit. You, you can't quit. It's people depending on you. And that's why I didn't quit. I have children who are out here that are my kids' friends, um, my family members. And I do it for them, because if I quit, then what? Some of them, um, you are their only hope. You're their only hope. And knowing that, you, you just can't quit. And God is what kept me from quitting. God placed this into my heart to do. And if he's placed something in your heart, if you don't do anything with it, like I said with my movies, Somebody he gives else. it to someone else. Because if he's given it to you to do something with it, and you're not doing his, okay, she'll do it. And, yeah. it. and then you'll say, I wanted to do that. That was my idea, mm -hmm. just like I did. So I got tired of that. I got tired of hearing that. Um, I got tired of seeing things happen. You know, people were always saying, kids are off the chain. Mm -hmm. They off the chain. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Well, what, what are your plans? What are you gonna do? So I invested time early on with my kids. Um, I know a lot of parents were like, oh my God, you're always in practice. You're always going to these games and you're always doing this and that. And I'm like, I had to invest the time yes. while they were young. Because when they get older, if you don't invest that time when they're younger, then guess what? You're going to invest the time somewhere you don't want to be when they get older. So I just made that sacrifice and just showing them that, you know, I was encouraging them along the way. You know, they look up, I'm in the stands. You know, that's important for kids. And so... If I would have given up, then it's easy for them to give up. That is true. So if you show them that you're working hard towards something, then they'll see your grit and your determination, and they'll glean from that. And they won't quit. It'll help mm -hmm. them to push through, whether exactly. it's in school, with um, their job, or anything else that's good. Because it's it's hard, yeah. you know, um, so much on your shoulders. And sometimes you want to give up. And mm -hmm. sometimes you feel like, you know, I can't do this. But like you said, if God has given you this vision, he's going to make provision. Yes. 
he's going to make a way for you to get exactly. there. Exactly. So where do you see yourself, your books, your series, and your organization? Where do you see everything in five years? Oh, it's such a huge vision. Um, my vision is to see kids come back and say, because of you, look at my empire. Mm -hmm. Bec or parents to say, because of you, my kid is no longer in juvenile detention systems. Mm -hmm. My kids are thriving. Uh, my kids are now uh, opening up their own um, business as the youngest person ever. Um, th that's what I see. Uh, the nonprofit going nationwide. I know that's uh, right. Right now, we are starting in the DMV, um, but we have anchors that are across the country that we can help these kids. Um, there's a lot going on in our country right now. Our kids are nervous, yeah. so let's give, let's channel that energy and give them the opportunity to excel. And that's what I see in five years, nationwide success amongst our young kids. I know that's right, Queen. Speak that into Hello. existence. <laughs> if you ain't going to do nothing else, at least start speaking it into existence. That's right. And then start walking in it. Power that's in the tongue. Look, I'm glad I know you. You know, I'm glad I'm I know glad you. I know you. Yeah, so uh, we're we going to the top. That's what I'm going to say. That's right. And we're going to make way. it look good. There's plenty of so. room at the top. Wow. So... This interview has been great. I want to make sure that people are able to get a copy of this wonderful book. Growing up can be fun, real life lessons. Things that we need to talk about, um, big words, so you don't have to worry about, you know, it's so small and so much, but it's, it's not overwhelming and it's a great book. How, let our audience know how they can contact with you and connect with you. Absolutely. Um, growing up can be fun, can be purchased at Amazon. Um, it also can be purchased at lifebooksforkids.net. That's our website. We have a suite of different products that uh, are available for our kids. And you can also email me at lifebooksforkids at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And you have a um, donation program on your website. Tell exactly. them about that because I want them to donate to that. Oh, that would be awesome. Um, what the donation is for is for our nonprofit that's called the Capital Summit Youth Edition. And what that is, is a nonprofit where we expose kids to different activities that could lead to entrepreneurship. Um, and even just finding their niche and we pair them with mentors. Um, I believe that kids have natural talents and at an early age, if we can develop that talent, the sky's the limit. So it's called the Capital Summit Youth Edition and that is also on our website uh, where it says how we give back. So I would love for any a donation, but a mentor or donation. Yeah, oh yeah, sign up to yeah. be a mentor. mentor. So make sure you guys connect with Miss Kenya Nicholas. Make sure you get your copy of the book. And I thank you guys for joining me here on The Stub Show. Don't forget, follow me on Instagram at the underscore stubs underscore show. And uh, my Y'all don't need my personal page because I'm always kind of doing something. I'm pretty sure y'all know what that is. But follow us on Facebook at The Stubbs Show. And the website is www.shadonnastubbs.life. See you next episode. ba da 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 Yeah. Do the right thing, but it's hard sometimes. Been looking for a better way, so hard to find. Waking up is such a chore, feel like I don't wanna do it anymore. No, don't ever wanna let it go. Oh, I just need a reason. Give me the light to spark a fire, burning down so deep. Don't really care what they say about me. Just wanna be free Give me the light to spark a fire Burning down so deep Running right into the flames, yeah, yeah Just wanna be me Got a lot of living to do before I die And I ain't got time to waste Thank the Lord for the day Push down the pain My self-belief caused me to dream subjectively don't give a fuck what you think, long as you
Give me the light to spark a fire Burning down so deep Don't really care what they say about me Just wanna be free Give me the light to spark a fire